Think of a time when you were watching something, and for one reason or another, you were immediately hooked. This is something I've felt quite often watching anime, which leads to this video. Here are the 10 best anime debuts of all time. Having now watched over 150 anime, I have finally moved past the anime beginner label, and I feel relatively qualified enough to make this video. However, there are plenty I haven't seen, and this list is obviously open to future revision. And before I get into the 10 best, Quick shoutouts to My Hero Academia and Solo Leveling, two anime that likely would have made this list had they combined their first two episodes into one. But they didn't, and that's their loss. After going back and rewatching all of the contenders, here are a few honorable mentions that just didn't quite make the cut. And those honorable mentions are Code Geass, Yu Yu Hakusho, Undead Unluck, Freerin, Beyond Journey's End, and ReZero starting life in a new world. Finally, I'm going to treat this as if you guys haven't seen any of these, so I won't be going into any in-depth spoilers, mainly because for those who haven't seen them, I want you to experience the same joy that I did watching them. Number 10, Talentless Nana. I'm going to venture to guess that this is by far the least known anime on this list, but Basically, the world is in danger of being destroyed by the enemies of humanity. And our story starts on an island with a group of students training to become heroes to protect the world. The episode centers around Nanao, the class punching bag with a complicated past. And it's an extremely well-done classic shonen plot where a character experiences real, believable growth. It introduces a memorable setting and world on the island, and a very intriguing storyline going forward. The setup at the beginning of the episode, is absolutely genius. And well, if you know, you know. Number nine, Erased. Erased has to be one of the most underrated anime ever, at least in terms of popularity or getting a talk online. This opening episode centers around Satoru, a failed mangeka, and now 29-year-old pizza delivery boy. He has a mysterious ability that takes a spin on a classic trope in anime, but uses it in a much more interesting way. And this allows us to connect with him instantly. His ability creates some problems for him, and then to solve these problems, things get, let's say, really difficult. Still one of the best concepts ever used in anime, in my opinion, but that's not all it has going for it. It's able to create distinct, likable characters that provide value and are interesting in their own right, sets up a lot of intrigue and questions we want answered, and of course, gives us a few unexpected twists and turns. Number eight, Rising of the Shield Hero. So funny story, I watched this for the first time with my best friend, and we were about 15 minutes in and we weren't really feeling. And he asked me, do you wanna keep going? And we were kinda of quiet for a moment before I said, well, we might as well finish it and see if it picks up. Well. It picked up. We ended up watching the first 22 episodes that night because we were completely hooked. Shield Hero opens with our lead, Naofumi, opening up a book about a mystical world. He ends up getting sucked into it and alongside a few others, branded a hero. However, things aren't exactly what they appear to be and before we know it, Naofumi has gotten himself into a world full of trouble. While it does have some cool world building, what makes this episode great is simple. I've never seen an episode of anime grip you emotionally in the way that Rising of the Shield Hero episode one does. It takes its time to properly set up its hook. As I said, we weren't feeling it at first, but then at the perfect moment, it forces it on you, leaving you with pretty much no choice but to buckle up for the long haul because you want to see what Naofumi's going to do from here and root for him every step of the way. Number seven, the Promised Neverland. So the plot of this one is simple. We're introduced to a bunch of kids in an orphanage, and the more we see, the more clear two things become. First, this group of kids truly view each other as a family and love each other, and, you know, see each other as real siblings. And second, something feels off. So something Promised Neverland does right from the start, maybe better than any other anime, is setting up a memorable and powerful atmosphere. So much so that the setting itself is basically a character of its own. And alongside that, the actual character themselves are given very clear and well done introductions into who they are and what their core values and strengths are. It does an excellent job adding intrigue throughout, setting up that something isn't right, and then when that realization occurs, it's so damn good. Number six, 
ZOM 100, Bucket List of the Dead. ZOM 100 has one of the best silly premises ever. A guy who'd prefer a zombie apocalypse to working his desk job. And it wouldn't work in any medium other than anime, but because it is anime, it works incredibly well. So we're introduced to Akira Tendo, an optimistic graduate who landed a job with his dream company. Things don't go exactly as planned, and as more time passes, the more Akira tends to resemble a zombie himself. Then an outbreak occurs, and all of a sudden, he's free. One of the things that makes this episode so good is how relatable it is to feel like not going to work or feeling exploited by an employer. And this has to be one of the best uses of color I've ever seen, from the use of grayscale and character mannerisms to convey the story to the eventual explosion of color with the exceptional soundtrack when the story calls for it, is done masterfully. One episode tells its own complete story that gives us a very human experience that deals with disappointment and even love, while also being full of humor and absurdity. Number five, Death Note. Was there any doubt that this would make the list? This is actually the first true anime I ever watched. My gateway into the drug that is anime, so to speak. And... To this day, it still holds up. In case you've been living under a rock for 20 years and you don't know, Death Note revolves around a genius high school student named Light Yagami who randomly finds a notebook called the Death Note, which supposedly kills anyone whose name is written in it. From there, we see how Light reacts with this now in his possession. To this day, it's one of the coolest concepts of all time. And something this episode does extremely well is showing the lingering temptation of using such a powerful tool. And the background is so full of context clues and deeper meanings signifying exactly what's going on and what's going to happen. It's such a well-produced show. And it really makes you think how terrifying something can be when the wrong person happens to get bored. Number four, Chainsaw Man. When I started compiling this list and putting contenders together, I actually thought this was going to have a strong chance at being number one. And after rewatching all of them, it didn't quite land that high, but was still excellent nonetheless. Chainsaw Man centers around Denji, a boy in a world of debt to the Yakuza. He pays these debts off by doing anything he can for money, and I mean anything but primarily by using his chainsaw devil dog, Pochita, to kill other devils. And when you see his meager dreams and the things he's willing to do to get out of this debt, you instantly garner sympathy for him. The relationship between Denji and Pojita is a beautiful one and really turns the dial up on your feels in this episode. When things take a turn for the worse, which is saying a lot, we end up seeing some absolute carnage and it is incredible to see. This one episode really is a complete story on its own about a man struggling to achieve his dreams. But don't worry, there's plenty of setup left to keep the show interesting going forward. Number three, To Your Eternity. To Your Eternity is the story of an ever-evolving orb that was placed on Earth to observe it. Over time, the orb changes forms numerous times before settling in on being a wolf, who happens to be a boy's pet. The boy and the wolf set out on a journey, only for them to learn some harsh truths. Of everything on this list, this is by far the most human story. The story of the ever-optimistic boy who has lost everyone except his wolf, who has to come to the realization that his dreams may not be possible, is a moving story on its own. But then we also get teases of the orb's conditions. And with the way things play out, you get really interested in where the hell things are going to go next. Number two, Attack on Titan. In my opinion, the greatest show of all time, and it all started here. Episode one follows Aaron Yeager, his friends and family living inside massive walls that protect them from creatures called Titans. Upon rewatching this, it dawned on me how slow it actually starts, because when I watched it the first time, I was instantly hooked but I didn't think it started as slow as it did. This is because it remains compelling throughout by setting up a unique world and engaging characters with clear values and belief systems, teases of incredible action to come, and of course, one of the most memorable final acts of any anime ever. Another thing that increased my enjoyment, but I can't really count here, was the added benefit of having so many little details that ended up paying off in later episodes. Number one, 
Oshi no Ko. To be honest, before I rewatched all these, I did not think this would really be in contention for the top spot, but it was the one that made me feel the most, and so here we are. Oshi no Ko's debut is a bizarre one. That is not at all what I was expecting going in. Basically, the story centers around the pop idol I, her pregnancy, and her managing her career while hiding the fact that she has children. That's as basic as I can get without spoiling any of the bizarre turns this story takes. Where you finish is nowhere near where you started. It definitely made sense to give this an extended first episode, because it needs and utilizes every second of its 80 minute runtime to perfection. What ZOM 100 did with the grayscale and color overload, this does with its animation, which is absolutely pristine throughout, with numerous frames that stand out. We are given introductions to many memorable and important characters, and somehow this show manages an almost slice-of-life slice feel for a while before veering genres a few times. The last five to ten minutes completes a remarkable character arc with one of the most, um, beautiful moments ever, among other things, and is some of the best stuff in anime, period not limited to debut episodes. If you haven't seen it, I'd highly recommend checking it out. So there you have it, my top 10 anime debuts of all time. What I get right, what I miss, let me know below.